Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. Warren Buffett. Welcome to Retirement Mentorship, your mentor to and through retirement. I'm your host, Freeman Lindy, Certified Financial Planner. Today is part two in our two episodes about risk tolerance being stupid. That is to say, investing based off of a risk tolerance questionnaire is about the dumbest way you could possibly invest. That's coming up on the Retirement Mentorship Podcast. First, the two men tune in, primary points of the podcast in the first two minutes. Today, we are covering two more of the problems with investing based on risk tolerance questionnaires and also hinting at the solution, giving you a short overview of how you defeat this stupidity. Problem number one, risk tolerance questionnaires are too powerful. You answer these five or so minute questionnaires and your entire lifetime return is dictated by your answers. Based on your answers to this questionnaire, you'll usually be placed in some model portfolio, which is a combination of equities and bonds, that will then determine your lifetime return. That is a lot of power to be placed in a five-minute questionnaire. Number two, risk tolerance questionnaires don't work. Despite the fact that pretty much everyone needs to complete a risk tolerance questionnaire and that pretty much everyone is supposedly invested according to their risk tolerance, which should keep them from making any mistakes, these risk tolerance questionnaires fail thousands of people, tens of thousands of people every decade. Everyone who has ever pulled out at the bottom of a bear market, whether it's 2008 or 2020 or any other time, took an RTQ before they invested. They supposedly already were invested in their risk tolerance and they still panicked out and made a life-threatening decision. And so not only do they potentially hinder you from long-term success, they don't even do what they're supposed to do. And so then after covering those two, we look at the solution to invest based on a plan, not on a risk tolerance questionnaire. That's coming up on the Retire Mentorship Podcast. Risk tolerance is stupid, part two. As we mentioned in the first episode, almost every single investor in America, before they invest, must fill out a risk tolerance questionnaire. If you didn't listen to the first episode, go back and listen to that from last week. These questionnaires are usually around 10, maybe 20 questions, and they cover a variety of topics, and they're meant to determine what is the investor's tolerance for risk. How much are they willing to lose? How much volatility can they sustain? And what are their expectations for growth? Unless you have gone online and opened up your own account with someone with no help from an advisor and gone through and picked out all of your own stocks or mutual funds or ETFs by yourself, you almost certainly have filled out a risk tolerance questionnaire. These questionnaires are then the basis for what your 401k or your advisor or the automated system you're using is going to recommend for your portfolio. The problem is, is that investing based on these risk tolerance questionnaires is stupid. We covered a few problems with it last week, including the fact that people don't actually understand what they're reading when they read risk tolerance questionnaires, and that you can interpret those questions in a variety of different ways. And the fact that there's this common misconception about risk versus volatility. People think that risk means losing it all, and the industry thinks that risk means how volatile your money is, at least in part. And this misunderstandings lead to people incorrectly filling these out all the time, either limiting their long-term growth because it leads them to be invested more, quote-unquote, conservatively than they should be, or by helping them not really understand volatility and having them still panic out at a bottom of a recession which we will cover a little bit more later. So while tens and hundreds of thousands of Americans are invested based on risk tolerance questionnaires, they are a dumb, dumb solution. We talked about it a little bit last week, but they are built to cover the butts of the companies who are doing the investing, not to help you invest wisely. 
And so we'll look today at two more reasons why investing based on risk tolerance questionnaires or RTQs, as we use for short, why that is so dumb and look at the solution you should be doing instead. So reason RTQs are so dumb. Number one, risk tolerance questionnaires are too powerful. You may have seen this before if you've filled one out recently. You may remember that after you fill these out, you will be recommended some portfolio. The way that these work is the uh, either the automated company or the 401k or the advisor's algorithms or broker-dealer or whatever they're working with will create a set of what are called model portfolios. It means they'll essentially all have the same types of investments in it, just in different ratios. And the basic premise is, is that the more quote-unquote conservative you are based on your risk tolerance questionnaire, the more bonds and fixed income you will have in your model portfolio. And the more, quote unquote, aggressive you are, the more equities you will have in your portfolio. And so while the most conservative portfolio might have only 20% equities and 80% fixed income, the most aggressive one will often have 100% equities and no fixed income. And so they are just, their model portfolios. The bunch of portfolios that only adjust based on the total amount of equities and fixed income you have. And unless you're working with an advisor who's really doing his homework, really working with you to create a plan and dig in, or if you've done all this work yourself, you will almost certainly be invested squarely based on your answers to the RTQ. Your answers that you gave in five minutes will determine your model portfolio which means that your lifetime return will be based on your answers that you gave in five minutes. There are basically two main keys to lifetime return. That is how much money you make on your investments over your lifetime. We covered this a bunch in the early episodes of the podcast, which you haven't listened to. You should go back and do so. But the number one key to lifetime returns is your behavior. You can do everything else right, but if you ruin it with your own behavior, it won't matter. And as is the case, this happens to almost everyone. The lifetime percentage returns of the average investor is half of the lifetime returns of the investments that the investor invests in. We covered this at length in episode one. Go listen to that if you haven't yet. Meaning that the things that we do with our investments, our behavior, have the biggest impact on our lifetime return. By far. I don't want to take away from that at all. The next biggest key, though, to our lifetime return is your percentage of equities that you hold. Percentage of stocks and stock mutual funds and equity mutual funds that you have in your overall portfolio versus the percentage of fixed income is by far the next largest key to your lifetime returns. So someone who has 100% equities over three decades will always, 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 always outperform and have greater returns and greater money in their pocket than someone who is 60% equities and 40% fixed income. It has always been the case and we assume it always will be. Of course, this is assuming that the behavior is the same and that the behavior of someone who is 100% equities and has the volatility along with it doesn't do something stupid in the meantime. But all other things being held constant, your percentage of equities is the next biggest determinant of your lifetime returns. This percentage of equities that you have in your investments is determined by your answers to the RTQ. The real and basically only function of an RTQ is to determine the percentage of equities that you should have in your portfolio. There isn't a way to reduce the volatility of equities. You can only mask them by adding in more fixed income. And so if the RTQ is trying to determine that your tolerance for volatility, let alone tolerance for risk, is lower than others, since they can't actually lower the volatility of equities, they simply add in more, a greater percentage of fixed income versus your equities so that overall the portfolio is less volatile. Therefore, your lifetime returns, as counted by the percentage of equities in your portfolio, is dictated by a five-minute questionnaire. The majority of most people's wealth is built in their 401ks. 
and the majority of those are invested based on a risk tolerance questionnaire. Your IRAs and investments, either directly through a platform or through a robo-advisor or even through a lot of financial service representatives, are largely based on your answers to a five-minute questionnaire. Do you really think that your entire lifetime return should be dictated by five minutes? That seems insane to me. Seems stupid. Investing based on risk tolerance is stupid. And this leads us to point number two for today. Risk tolerance questionnaires don't work. RTQs have failed thousands and hundreds of thousands of people over time. They failed tens of thousands of people in just 2020 alone. I remember hearing that 30% of investors over 60 went to cash in March of 2020. That is, at the worst possible time, at or nearing retirement, they bailed on their equities as they were at their lowest point, erasing years and years worth of gains. All of these people were invested based on a risk tolerance questionnaire. Supposedly, they were all invested within their risk tolerance. But it didn't stop them from doing the worst possible thing you can do. Selling your equities at their lowest point. RTQs don't work. So why are we using them as the basis for a lifetime return? This is exactly what they're supposed to keep people from doing. Panicking out at the bottom of a the market. They're supposed to mask the volatility of equities by adding in a percentage of fixed income based on your answers to these questions. And yet, for tens of thousands of people, it doesn't work. So why are we basing our investments off of them? I think a lot of it is because people respond differently to questionnaires than they do in real life. Last week, we went through a risk tolerance questionnaire. And and you may remember that a couple of the questions were around, you know, what would you do if your money experienced a 20% decline, right? If you had $50,000 invested and it went down to $39,000 in one year, what would you do? Do nothing, pull it out, put more money in. Those were kind of the responses. And then the follow-up question was, what if it went down another 10% after that, down to $35,000? Then what would you do? And I think a lot of it is, it's kind of like those questions where, you know, if, if you, uh, came out and you saw a speeding train hurtling towards a fork in the track and on one side was you know someone you love was was tied up and on the other side uh, 12 strangers were tied up and you had the choice uh, for the train fork if you wanted to send the careening train uh, running over the one loved one or the 12 strangers those types of questions right and they're kind of like well you what would you do and at the end of the day, we don't actually know what we'd really do if we were in that type of situation, right? They may be interesting to think about and to, uh, you know, propose in a philosophy class or a critical thinking class, but that's not the same as actually being in that situation. And so in the same way, being asked, hey, what would you do if your money lost 20% in a down market is not the same as the actual experience of doing that. And if you had no prior education, no bolstering of your belief in an investment plan over time. When you don't know what you're doing, that's when you are at risk of doing something dumb. And what RTQs do not do is educate people. What they do not do is build belief in an investment plan and an overall financial plan that helps you weather the storms and weather the bad times. They don't do anything except possibly to curb some people's long-term growth and to make other people have a false sense of security that they abandon the moment it gets tough. And so not only are risk tolerance questionnaires too powerful, they don't work. And so investing based on an RTQ is stupid. It is stupid. So what's the solution then? If almost all of us are in fact invested based on a risk tolerance questionnaire, what, what's the alternative? It seems like everywhere you go, other than having to learn the depth of knowledge to completely pick your own investments and know that you're doing a good job, 
what's the alternative to investing based on a risk tolerance questionnaire? The solution is this. Invest based on a plan, not a risk tolerance questionnaire. You need a plan, not merely a portfolio. An RTQ might give you a model portfolio, but that is not the same thing as having a plan modeled after your life. You need an investment plan, not just a portfolio. And your plan must cover certain things. First and foremost, it must cover defeating the four horsemen. We covered those in episode four, which if you haven't listened to, go back and do so. Basically, the four horsemen are this. One, poor diversification. Two, chasing returns. Three, euphoria. And four, panic. So you must have a plan to cover these things which devastate people's lifetime investor returns. So your plan must cover poor diversification. What will you actually be invested in? How will you make sure that is the right amount of diversification, not too much or too little? How can it be a plan that you will actually understand and stick with? What is the expected volatility and the expected risk, knowing that those are different things? Are you diversified enough so that the volatility will not be an issue? And do you have the appropriate amount of actual risk? Two, your plan must cover chasing returns. How are you going to make sure that you are invested based on principles and disciplines of good investing, not on whatever is hot right now? How do you make sure that you are not simply chasing the next best thing, but that you have a plan that is built for decades, not days? Number three, your plan must cover euphoria. What about the shiny new era fads? The things that are catching everyone's attention. How do we make sure that we are not chasing a squirrel when we need to be investing for our lives? And number four, it needs to cover panic. What will you do when, not if, you face another 2008 or another 2020? It is not a matter of if you will face these recessions, steep drops in the value of your investments, but when and how often. And you need to have a plan for what to do when, not if, these things happen to you. Is your plan to try to avoid them, to try to get out before they happen? Good luck with that. Or is your plan to hold on, to stay invested, and to have the appropriate other monies and investments and other places so that you can do that much better. You need an investing plan, not just an investment portfolio. And I will also say this. If you are currently working with an investment advisor and a risk tolerance questionnaire is the only thing your advisor did to pick your investment portfolio, please please, please find a new one. Don't go back and ask them to look at it more and help you pick a better portfolio than just giving you an RTQ. They don't know how to do that. If they knew how to do that, they wouldn't have simply given you a risk tolerance questionnaire and based your lifetime returns off of those five minutes. They would have done that to begin with. You need to find someone who actually knows how to build an investing plan and help you stick to it over decades, not days. Also, if all of your wealth is in your 401ks or a vast majority of it, like most people, and you've never had anyone look at it, and those are all based on your RTQ, then you need to have that looked at as well. Again, by someone who knows how to create an investing plan, not just have you stuck in a model portfolio. You need an investment plan, not just a risk tolerance questionnaire. Investing based on risk tolerance questionnaires is stupid. Investing based on a plan, now, that's just smart. If you have questions about your investing plan, you can email us at questions at retirementorship.com. If you've been benefiting from the podcast and you've been enjoying this, consider becoming one of our members. In a link in the podcast notes, you will find a link to Retire Membership, which is where you can sponsor the podcast for the cost of a latte a week or a latte a month. 
that is for either four dollars or sixteen dollars a month you can sponsor the show and ensure that we can continue doing this ad free and without trying to sell you anything other than of course the membership in the coming weeks we will look more in depth at some of the flaws of our current mass investing piece including target date funds and the problems with those We've talked about a couple times in here how most people have most of their money in 401ks and the vast majority of those are invested in target date funds. And there's big problems with those. So we'll cover that and we'll also cover how to find an advisor planner to help create your investment plan if that is what you want to do. There's a lot of them out of there. It can be hard to distinguish between the ones that will actually give you an investment plan versus the ones that will give you an RTQ and go from there. All that's coming up soon on the Retirement Trip Podcast. We'll see you next week. This podcast is educational only and is not intended to be investment, legal, or tax advice or recommendations, whether direct or incidental. Again, this is not investment advice. Consult your financial, tax, and legal professionals for specific advice related to your specific situation. Never take investment advice from someone who doesn't know you and your specific situation. All opinions expressed in this podcast are the opinions of the speakers expressing them. All performance reference is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Retirement mentorship is not affiliated with or controlled by any registered investment advisor, broker-dealer, or other financial services company.